Welcome to another Fast Tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to tackle a question that I get asked all the time. How to have your Microsoft Access database fill in a PDF form? I get asked this one all the time. Hey, I got a PDF form from my insurance company or whatever that I got to fill out, a vendor form, a product acquisition, whatever. Okay. Now, first, let me say that I am a strong proponent of doing as much as you can with access without having to use other stuff. So if this is a case where you can just recreate this form and print it out, then I would do that straight in access. In fact, I have another video where I teach you how to do just that. You could take any printed you know, piece of paper form. There's a difference in terms form here. Access forms are things we use on screen like this, right? Whereas I'm talking about paper forms, like a PDF form, okay? I like to make this kind of stuff as an access report if I can, and then just fill the data in, in access. This video explains how to do that. But sometimes, especially insurance companies, I know how they are, they want you to fill out their form, right? They send it to you, fill this out, and then email it back to us with the data in it. And it's got to be that form. So can you use access to do that? Well, yeah, sure, of course. Now, before we get started, I got a bunch of videos I want you to watch first if you have not already. First, this requires VBA. No way around it. All right, go watch my intro to VBA video if you've never done any programming and access before. It's super easy. Take about 20 minutes to watch this video. It's not hard. Don't be scared by it. I want you to know how to do an if-then statement. All right, go watch that. And we're going to use a for next loop. Go watch this too. And a lot of people say to me, Rick, why do you make us jump around all these different videos? Well, that's because it's stuff out of order, right? There's, there's stuff you got to know before we do what we're doing today. Now, if you watch my full course from start to finish, right, every level builds on the one before it. So you don't have to jump around to different videos like that. That's why you take my course. But if you want to stick with the fast tips, you're going to have to do a little jumping around. Now, a couple days I released this video called Follow Hyperlink. This is how we're going to open up the PDF file from Access. So go watch this. The follow hyperlink command lets us click a button and open up that PDF file that we want to fill in. Okay, go watch this. We're going to need a sleep timer. Sleep timer puts the database code to sleep for a second. It puts a pause in there because there's going to be a short delay between the time we issue the command to open up the PDF file and the time it's loaded and ready to accept entry. Okay, so you might have to wait like a second or two. So you need to put a sleep timer in there. Go watch this video. And finally, go watch my send keys video. That's how we're going to get the data into the PDF file. Now, I'm not a huge fan of send keys. If, if you watch this video, I'll explain why. I don't love it, but it works some of the times. It's what I call the king of the yeah, good enough sometimes functions. But it's the easiest way to get the data into our PDF file without, without crazy programming and, and having to buy an actual copy of Acrobat Pro. So just watch this, and, and this is what we're going to use today. Okay, so here I am in the Tech Help Free Template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website, and you would know this if you watched any of the previous videos that I told you to go watch. All right. So first, we need a form to fill out. Now, I just happened to have gotten one a couple of days ago. We're going to use this one. I got this PDF form from a place called the Country Pet Ranch. I highly recommend them. They're where we board our dogs, and they wanted us to fill this out with the owner name, the pet information, all this stuff. Okay, so and it's, it's got a nice form in here, and it's perfect for the class, so we're going to use this, and I, I'm going to make these guys famous. So if you got pets and you're in the Southwest Florida area, bring them to these guys. Okay, so this is saved at G My Drive. That, that little character is a space there, so it's G My Drive and then ranch.pdf. So that's what we have to use in the follow hyperlink function to open that guy up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the customer form. Because this has a lot of data in it that we can use to send, right? Like name and address and stuff. And I'm going to take a button. I'm going to copy one of these. Copy, paste. And I'm going to put a button right down here. And I'll just put on the caption here, fill in PDF. Okay. Now, I'm just going to show you the techniques that you have to use. You're going to have to customize this a lot for whatever PDF you're using. And you're kind of at the mercy of the document changing in the future. Okay, if you got one document that you save that you're going to use over and over and over again, right? Open it up, fill on some data, email it to people, whatever. Then you're good. But if that document changes, even in the slightest, you're going to have to retool your database. 
So that's another reason why this method is imperfect, but it, it works, right? But if the insurance company sends you a new version of this PDF form that you got to fill out, oh, you get, better test it, make sure it works okay. That's why I said if you can, it's better to build the whole form in Access itself instead of relying on the PDF. All right, so open this guy up. Let's call this fill in PDF button. Right click, build event, give me my code window. All right, first thing, let's open up the PDF file. And if you remember from the follow hyperlink video, follow hyperlink. And this is at g colon backslash my drive backslash ranch dot PDF. That's my file. Save it. Let's make sure it opens. click and it opened on a different window it's opening it's right there i've got four different monitors on my desk so it just it picks one to open up randomly <laughs> and yes there is a way to control that it requires crazy vb code windows api stuff but this is good enough for now okay so we've got the document opening with our follow hyperlink now the next thing you're going to need is a sleep timer right here because every time i tried this without one nothing happened because like I said, it takes a second or two, usually depending on the speed of your computer and whether or not that's a network file. If it's a local file, a second's probably good enough. Okay, but you're going to want to put a delay in there between the time that you open it and the time that you start sending keys or doing stuff. So I'm going to put a one second delay. To get a delay, we need to use the sleep timer from the sleep video. We get that on my website on the sleep video. Here's the free source code down here. It's in the code vault. And we need that line right there. It's the only one we really need. Copy it. Come back to access. We're going to create a module. I'm, I think I'm going to add the sleep timer to the template because I, I've been using this a lot lately. Now that I've taught you guys how to use it, I've been, <laughs> I've been using it a lot. Save. Uh, global mod is fine. Okay. Now we can close. What I'm doing here basically is this window is on top of the other one. So I'm just going to close this global module window. And it brings me right back to this guy. All right, so we're going to sleep 1,000, which is 1,000 milliseconds, right? Wait for PDF to load, okay? And, and now let's see what's going to happen once that actually loads, all right? So come back here, click the button. It opens up, and now don't touch anything. Now, you'll see that the browser has focus, okay? But what I got to do is I got to get the cursor down here on this form field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the tab key and count the number of times I have to hit it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 12, 13, 14. See that? Because the focus starts on the browser itself. Then you got to tab through all those controls in the header. Each one of these is a tab stop, right? And then down here through these hyperlinks. And finally you land down here. 14 times I had to tab. Okay. And again, this is completely dependent upon what application you're using. If you have Acrobat on your computer, it's going to open up an Acrobat. So you might need a longer pause. You might need more or less or fewer tabs. All right. It's all depending on your document. Okay. So I need to put in here 14 tabs. I need to send keys to the tab key 14 times before I get to the first form field. So let's go back to our code. In fact, I'm going to close this thing again, and let's go back to our code window. I'm going to use a loop, so I wanted to watch the 4 next video, so dim X as a long, little timer here. Okay, we need to loop 14 times. All right, let's, let's put in here, send 14 tab keys. All right, cats, keys. So, for X equals 1 to 14, send keys. How do you send the tab key? It's curly braces tab comma true wait for each one to go now again here you need a short really short delay otherwise they go all right next to each other and it, and it messes up i put in here sleep 200 that's one fifth of a second and when that finishes the cursor should be sitting on that first form field all right save it let's try it and see ready here we go click oh oh okay and if Mistake, and again, I, I leave my mistakes in the videos so you guys can see I make them too. I'm so used to this being an if-then block. This has to be a for next. Simple mistake. And that would have been caught if I would have simply did a debug compile beforehand. I wish debug compile had a, 
uh, an F key, because you can just hit boom, like F6 or whatever, but it doesn't. Okay, save it, come back over here. Here we go, ready, click, and it opened up on a different window again, but it worked. I'm still I'm looking right at it. Hang on, let me see if I can get it. Okay, let me put it up here. I'm gonna leave this browser window here. So that this is the, usually the last browser window that was open, like I'm using Chrome, it'll open up a new tab in that browser window. So let me go to my home page here. All right, I'm going to leave this browser open sitting on my home page. And that should hopefully be the, it should jump right back there. All right, let's try it again. Ready? Click. Yes, it did. And here we go. Watch a tab. See, see, see it going. All right, perfect. 14 little tabs and it goes right to pet name. Now, another thing to notice is their form fields, their tab orders messed up. Watch this. Tab, tab, tab. See, you got, you got to deal with it. You have to deal with whatever order. Right? You kind of just, yeah. And you could tell them to fix their form. <laughs> Good luck. But yeah, hey, country pet range people, if you guys are watching, you should you should fix your, your tab order. I'll, I'll tell you guys. <laughs> All right. It's a, it's, a, it's a common mistake. When you make these PDF forms sometimes, um, the order that, it's like Microsoft Access when you're building forms, right? The, the, the tab order sometimes happens to be the order in which you put the controls on the form. So if you do first name, last name, and then you add customer ID afterwards, that's going to be the third in the tab stop. So we're down here now. I got to put the pet name in there. So now we can send keys to pet name. Okay, let's go back to our code. And now actually I'm going to close this tab. So we'll leave that open. All right, back here. Back to the code. Okay, so now we can actually fill in fields. We're going to send keys where we're on the pet name, right? Send keys. Let's put, uh, I'll just send Carter. My dog's one of my dog's names. Uh, tab. All right, we're gonna send, we're gonna send Carter and then a tab, comma true. Wait for that to finish, and then sleep. Two hundred. All right, let's see what happens here. Save it. Back to the database and click. Tab 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 tab, and boop Carter. See that? There it is, right there. Okay. okay. All right, we're down to gated community name. All right, so we don't need that, so we can send another tab. Now we're up to owner's name. Okay, so close that down here. All right, so we're gonna send we're gonna send two tabs after the dog's name, and now we're down to the uh, the owner's name. So I'm gonna send keys first name and space and last name and a tab comma true and then sleep 200 okay save it let's try it again okay and then go ready tab 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 bump 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 perfect look at that same we'll do one more we'll do address all right so now we're sitting on the address field actually what we got address then city then state then zip let's do all of those all right oh and then phone number Address, city, state, phone number. We don't need a second area. And then we just, we just tab past all these things. And you just continue on with all these fields. Let's fill those in real quick. Now, what I'm going to do is, you see a lot of repetition here, right? So we can make a little subroutine out of this. You could say private, so, oh, private, sub, send. Let's call this um, send data, S as a string. And what we're going to do is we're going to send keys um, S followed by tab, comma, true, and then sleep 200. So now, instead of having all of this stuff down here, we're going to use send data. And here we just send data, Carter, see this? And then we'll do send data, first name and last name. See? And actually, it's Carter had two after it, didn't it? Yeah, so we're going to have to send keys another tab here, too. So let's do this. We'll do send data, Carter. And we can put an extra tab in here because it's going to send that and then add a tab up top. All right, see what I'm doing there? All right, then send data this. And now we're on address. So it's just going to be send data address, uh, send data city, send data state. Send data zip. Send data phone number, was it? What was next? Primary phone, yeah. So phone, so that's going to be 
Do we call it just phone? I don't remember my own field names. Yeah, just phone. <laughs> Save changes. Yes. And then phone. Okay. All right. Then that's good enough for now. Save that. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to close this. And ready. Here we go. Click. Tab, 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 tab. Filling in some data. Filling in some data. And look at that. Same. Again. Send keys. Yeah, okay. Whenever it comes to controlling other applications, it's literally just some trial and error here. Right? Open up the application. Tab around where you got to tab. Send whatever you got to send. Right? I, I, would, I never use it send keys inside of access anymore there's no there's no need to you can control everything in access without send keys send keys is only purpose really is to control stuff outside of access and again there are ways to do this without using send keys um you can get the full version the paid version of adobe acrobat and it comes with an api an application programming interface and you can install that on your computer and then you can programmatically use vba to control pdf files just like with Office, you can control Excel and control Word. I've done some videos on how to do this. I got more coming out. All right. But you have to have the paid version of Acrobat to do that, which I personally don't have. I've never had. I think years ago, I bought a copy of Acrobat. And we're talking years ago, back in like 97 or so, before you could create PDF files with just Microsoft Office, you had to buy Acrobat before you can create PDF files. Adobe finally got smart and you know, licensed it to Microsoft or whatever, because it is a pretty ubiquitous file format. But, uh, you know, I, I, I have no need for the, the full version of Acrobat. I don't do a lot with them, aside from creating PDF files from Office documents, right, from Word, from Access, from Excel. Um, if any of you really want to see how to do that, I would be happy to put together a video for it, but I don't have Acrobat. So if one of you wants to buy me <laughs> a... a a version of Acrobat Pro, I think it's like 239 or something like that, right? Send me a legit copy, and I will get it, and I will figure it out. It's not that hard. I've seen, I've seen code online for it, All right? Do a Google search. You'll find it. It's not that hard. It's like 20 lines of code, and it can be done. You, can, you, can, you just got to get the names of these form fields, fill them all in with VBA code, pff, you're done, okay? I just, I, I don't need to do it myself, so I've never bothered. That's the same deal I made with one of my students, Nancy. Uh, a little while back, she's like, can you print to Dymo labels from Access? I'm like, I, I don't know. I've never done it before. I've never tried. I don't have a Dymo label printer. If you want to send me one, I'll figure it out. <laughs> and I did. And there's the video. <laughs> so <laughs> same deal goes. If you guys want to learn how to control PDF files, well, I need a copy of Acrobat. I'm not going to buy it myself. I don't need it. <laughs> the problem with using, um, with using the full version of Acrobat, though, is it will install a library file. So in your code, you're going to under tools references. All right. There is some Acrobat stuff in here. If you look, um, where is it? Well, there used to be years ago. I don't see it anymore. I, again, I haven't done much of this lately, but uh, you'll, it'll install uh, Adobe Acrobat library files in here. And the downside to that is, and you know, if you've, if you've been following my videos for any period of time, I don't like using anything outside of Microsoft Office. I really don't. I try to avoid it at all costs because if you're the only person using this, it's not that big of a deal. If you have to distribute this to other people, they have to have the exact same files on their machines, the exact same library files, sometimes in the exact same locations. Okay. And if this company that makes this library file decides to upgrade or change their software, you're screwed. Okay. It'll, it'll affect your application. So that's why I always say, try to do whatever you can in access without using third-party software. And yeah, I've seen some uh, in my in my research for this video. I, I did see a couple of other utilities uh, from some other people that that claim to be able to do this. I, again, I haven't used them. I haven't tried them. So use them at your own risk. Okay. But uh, moving on, if you want to try, well, let's do one more thing here. Um, let's say you filled this out completely, right? You just go down all these fields in here, fill out whatever you got to fill out using your tab, 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 whatever. Okay. And now it's time to save this thing. Okay. You can save this file. You can even give it a unique file name, right? So let's say you're filling it out for this customer, right? You click the button, fill it out, save it, close, you know, close the tab, close Acrobat, whatever. And then, um, you know, do another one. And you can save these all as individual files. 
If you watch my email video, you can then email it as an attachment, all for all right from Access. All right, let me show you how to save this. All right, so we're gonna come in here. We're gonna go save it. All right, save save the file, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna send keys. Now, how do you do Control S to save? It's gonna be that guy, and then a little S. Be careful here. I I made this mistake earlier myself. If you use a capital S then it's control shift S, which is not save. You gotta be very careful with that stuff. If you're hitting control keys, control S, you wanna make sure you specify the little S there. All right, comma true. In fact, I'll put in here, uh, be careful not to use capital S. And I know this is a fast tip, but I'm gonna save this database. Uh, gold members, you'll be able to download this off my website. It'll be right on the page uh, that you're watching the video on. If you're on YouTube, go to my website, gold members, you'll be able to find this. Okay, now when this is done, I've, I've noticed that you got to have a little tiny bit longer of a sleep timer here. So we're going to sleep 500, half a second. Because what happens here is when you hit Control S, it opens up the file save dialog box. Okay, and then we're going to send keys. Where do you want to save this file to? I recommend send keysing the whole thing. So G colon backslash my drive backslash, uh, we'll call it new PDF. And then... Um, you could put the customer ID, right? And then a space. And then um, how about the current date and time? Format now as YYYYMMDD-HHNNSSSS, right? And dot .pdf. So you'll get a file name that's new PDF one for customer one, and then the format of the year, month, day, hour, minute, second. I got a format video. You can go watch that if you want to. I'll put a link down below. <laughs> and don't forget your comma true. After you send that, we're going to sleep again. Uh, we don't, we're not going to use our, our send data for that because we're putting a tab after each one there. We don't need the tab after these ones. And then um, when you're all done, send keys, enter. And that should issue the save command. And then we're going to sleep another half a second. Skeep. Skeep, skeep, skeep. <laughs> and then if you want to, you could close it. Um, Control F4 closes the browser tab. Alt F4 will close your browser completely. All depends on what you want. I'm not going to do it, but I'll type in the command for you so you have it. Send keys. And then it's going to be, if you want Control F4, it would be this guy. And then F4 like that. All right, close browser tab and i think percent sign is alt it's on microsoft's page but i'm going to rem that out i'm not going to actually do that i want to see it happen all right let's give it a shot save it i'm going to close this tab down come back to the database and go tab 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 fill in some stuff and we should see the save dialog box and poof, all right it, it came and it went real fast let me see if the file's there yep there it is I moved it because I got other stuff in my My Drive folder. I don't want you guys seeing, and I don't feel like cleaning it all up. <clears throat> but there's the file. I created it. And if I double-click on this guy, there it is with all my data in it. If you want to see that dialog box appear a little bit longer before it just, you know, finishes and goes away, you can feel free to put a longer delay in here, right? Uh, put like a put like a two second, a full two-second delay there before it presses Enter. All right, let's try it again. Let's do someone else this time. Let's go James Kirk. Ready? And you, of course, you'd have a field in here with this dog's name. Uh, oh, we got uh, Porthos for... Do I have Archer in here? No, I don't have Archer. But, all right, we'll do, we'll do Picard. Ready? Go. Tap, 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 tap. See, it's, 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 it's fairly reliable. And... Oh, what happened? Oh, that's interesting. So here, it's a good thing that I tried this because this happened. Uh, this didn't happen when I was testing it. Uh, I know exactly what happened, too. Look, it sent Paris, and then it stopped because I'll bet you he does not have, yep, he does not have a state. So he's missing data. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to say, hey, if that's missing or empty, just send a space. That's what I would do. And, yep, see, they got an invalid use of null, debug. Okay, because we tried to send that. And it can't handle it. Now, what we could do is we could check each one of these 
at this level, or we can make our private sub deal with it. Now, you can't send it as a string, but you can send it as a variant. Okay, if you send it as a variant, it can accept a null value. And what I'm going to actually even say here is, um, right here, I'm going to say if is null s or s equals blank, then s equals a space. Because you could send a space to the PDF file, and it'll just it'll just take the space and go in, and no one will know the difference. But you don't want to send it; you can't send a null value. So it's actually really good that that came up. All right, let's try it again. See, sometimes, you know, even even when I ran through this beforehand before I recorded the video, and sometimes things happen. And I'm leaving this in the video because you, you know, you'll see what happens, right? All right, let's give it a shot. Ready? Hit the button and go. Tab, 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 tab. Tab, tab, tab. Put some stuff in there. I put a space in the state. And perfect. There's my two-second delay. And save. And we have a winner, folks. <sighs> and the crowd goes wild. <sighs> there you go. That's it. That's how you get. And this, this, uh, this works with any application, pretty much. As long as you open it. And, you know, it's, got, it's in the foreground. You can, you can tab around. You can control it. You can do stuff with it. Make sure you don't lose focus. And like I said in the in the send keys video, don't rely on this for anything mission critical, like a server that's running that you got to process orders, whatever. If you want a little, if you got a form, you want to click a button and make it fill in stuff for you to save you some time. Fine, great. You can see it was I we, we put this together what in thirty minutes. And now that you know how to do it, it's pretty you know pretty easy and straightforward. But I wouldn't rely on this if like your business depends on it. Send keys is not reliable. Okay. There you go, uh, gold members. I'll throw this in the um, in the section in the in the download page for you. And I do want to take one second just to mention something. I tried to, uh, and 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 I can I can sometimes use my my platform to complain. I tried to get some customer support from Adobe today, just to ask them if uh, you know what what version of Acrobat do I have to buy? Can I buy standard? Do I have to buy Pro to be able to control? You know, to be able to fill in the PDF file from VBA. So I got Gurpreet in and their virtual assistant, but it gives you a person, right? And then next it was like, I asked him, is, is it possible, you know, which version do I need? And he's like, no, Acrobat doesn't support it. And I'm like, yeah, it is possible. I've, I've seen it in dozens of forums. I know there's code to do it. And so I'm like, you know, hey, you know, are you sure? <laughs> Here's, I gave him a link. Here's a forum where there's code to do it. Right? I just want to know, do I need standard or pro? That's about $100 difference, because uh, I was going to actually buy a copy. And then, you know, let me check on this. I'm like, sure, great, go ahead, check on it. So he left the conversation, forwarded me to someone else. And then I got uh, I got Vikram. Okay, he's reviewing the stuff. And then, uh, you know, I'd be happy to pull up your account, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't have an account. I just, you know, want you to answer that simple question. Okay? And then, uh, nothing. Gone. And that was at seven. Excuse me, seven forty-seven a.m. And uh, as you can see, I let it sit in the corner of my window, and I waited until about eight thirty, well, eight twenty something, and just uh, nothing gone. So uh, they lost a sale, and uh, obviously, I'm going to complain <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> so just be aware. Anybody here who works for Adobe, <laughs> let them know that th this is the perfect example of why, as a company, you have to make sure your frontline customer service people know your product. Okay, and if he doesn't know it, great, find someone else that does, but then they just completely drop me. <laughs> so, meh, oh well. Anyways, that's my complaint for the day. And yeah, I get to do that once in a while. Because, you know, if, if, uh, if I get bad customer service from a company, I'm going to let you guys know. If I get great customer service from a company, I also let you guys know. I've, I've endorsed several products, and I, I, I let all my, my viewers and, and people on YouTube and, and my website know if a product is great or if a product you know, if the company drops the ball. So anyways, thanks for listening. And uh, I hope this helps you learn how to fill in a PDF from your Microsoft Access database. And that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. 
You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.